this is kind of, kind of important. All right. Is there anybody who maybe wants to share some a quick testimony with us, something you've learned, something that's kind of blowing your mind at the moment from what we've learned here? Oh, this group is so shy. How are we going to get the shyness out of them? There's a smile, Jessica. Do you want to share something? <laughs> Push the button, honey. Push the button. Not working. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yes, Alan, go ahead. So I've been practicing the meditation that um, Ipton talked about, and um, I've been finding it really interesting to do and um, have actually been enjoying it as well and um, had an awesome encounter the other day. Um, I won't go into that because it's quite lengthy, but um, yeah, I just want to thank Etienne for teaching about that last time, last week, I think it was. Thanks. Thank you for that. Yes, the meditation is such a powerful. Global outpouring on the 4th of July, that kind of sounds familiar. Yep, sounds like that. All right, Etienne. So you will be in Dallas the end of the month. Yay. You maybe want to give us an idea. The conference's name is um, Oneness. Yeah. It will be, the date I think is Friday the 30th of June and the 1st of July, Saturday, and then Friday. Sunday as well. You maybe want to give us an idea of what can we expect? What can we look forward to? Yeah. Yes, one is, is going to be amazing. I'm really looking forward to it. You remember, um, God created all and all basically as one thing. Everything is in God, is in oneness. So what this oneness conference is going to be is that we're going to look at what happens to you and I when we come in union and unity with Christ and intimacy, and what are the manifestations outside of creation or in creation that aligns with us, that, that what do we carry inside to administrate and to rule with, what is available to us, and what is waiting for us in creation to respond. And I'm not only talking about the earth is crying out and all that scripture, I'm talking about what about the spiritual dimensions does come in oneness when we come in oneness? What is the response of your body, soul, and spirit? What's the response of all of creation? And how do we bring everything into one, let's call it one photo of Yahweh? How does everything become glory? So I'm really looking forward to that. Good. Great oneness. Oh, goodness. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say nothing more than that. I'm really excited. All right. Um, I think everybody who's going to be here is probably in here. So, Etienne, I think I'm just going to let you continue while you have the mic. Enjoy. Good. Well, good day, I should say, morning, afternoon, evening, different countries, New Zealand, Australia, America, South Africa, UK, all over. So, it's great to see the faces again, and I appreciate the guys getting up early in the morning and late at night. Um, it's really special to see the commitment, and that is people that I love to work with, people that are committed. Um, let's just pray. Lord, we bless you. We glorify you. We exalt you. We say thank you that on this session, you're going to open up every part of our being body soul and spirit that everything will be enlightened that the breath of yahweh will flow through our beings and there will be a new sound frequency and vibration being released in us because of a new fire and lord that we will actually become desperate for the fullness of the manifestation for you and 
we just come into this day and we declare your glory your beauty and we lock our eyes our ears our minds our hearts unto you as we step into oneness with you and what we touch we become what we behold we become as you move us now from glory to glory and i declare lord that this teaching will create a different view a greater view and a greater expectation of you and of heaven so that we could manifest it here on earth we pray it in the name of yahweh amen I'm sorry, there's so much happening now in the spirit. And I hope you encountered as well. Like the Lord just removes my ceiling of my study here and all I see is glory in heaven and beings and angels and his face. And it's like I'm burning in fire. May you experience that as well. So we're going to start with the seven spirits of God. And there are many opinions, many different teachings about it, but we're going to lay foundations and we're going to do the greater things. And in the last days that I spent on the spirits again, and I look at some of my old teaching and I realize the teachings that I did a year, two years, three years, four years ago about the spirit, the seven spirit is nothing to what is available now and how we've grown in the spirit and how God has moved and just give us greater abilities, greater vision, greater revelation of spirit. And I realized there's no ways we can teach it in one night. There is no way we can do it because it's so deep. It's so amazing. It, it absolutely brings you in all and amazement all the time. I apologize you know sometimes I can't talk properly it's just again there's so much happening Isaiah 11 2 we all know the scripture and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. I want to make this clear. There are many teachings that will tell you the seven spirits of God is the Holy Spirit. And we hear scripture that talks about the sevenfold Holy Spirit. But I want to come and lay the foundation in my research with the, in the Jews and the Hebrew times and the biblical times and the um, scriptures, Dead Sea Scrolls and everything that was researched, how and how they saw it and how it functions. The seven spirits of God, if I can put it in worldly terms, is like this is the Holy Spirit, and out of the Holy Spirit comes seven umbilical cords. And out of those umbilical cords at the end are seven beings that are a representation of the Holy Spirit. Those are like seven dimensions 
of the Holy Spirit and seven manifestations. But we're going to go through the scriptures and then you'll, you'll get the picture clearly and you'll see it clearly. And we're going to start going through it. So the seven spirits of God, their duty is to train the sons of the father's house. So if we go to Galatians, Galatians 4, verse 1, 1 to 5, and I'm reading it out of the Amplified. Now, what I mean is that as long as the inheritor, the heir, is a child and under age, he does not differ from a slave, although he's the master of all the estate. Remember, you're the master of all the estate, but he is under guardians and administrators or trustees until the date fixed by his father. So what happens? The seven spirits of God are those guardians and administrators or trustees. I know there are some, some translations that talk about the tutors and the governors. They are the ones that are training the sons of God to come into a place of maturity so that they could take up the fullness of their inheritance. Now, if we just go to another great scripture that all of us know, and as an amazing lady, and I love to see her in the spirit. She's really amazing, and I know lots of you have seen her called Esther. So if you go to Second Esther, verse 9, it says, And the maiden pleased Haggai and obtained his favor. And he speedily gave her the things for purification and the portion of food. And the seven chosen maids to be given for, given her from the king's palace. And removed her and her maids to the best apartment in the harem. And verse 12, it said, Now when the turn of each maiden came to go into the king, Ahasuerus, after regulations for the woman had been carried out for 12 months, since this was a regular period for the beauty treatment, six months with oil of myrrh and six months with sweet spices and perfumes and the things for the purifying of the woman. Now, what does handmaidens do? Handmaidens are doing exactly the same what the seven spirits of God does. They are preparing the sons of God. Remember, Esther became a queen. So they are preparing the kings and the priests in the order of Melchizedek to be present and appear before the king. And we know the story with Esther. Instead of the 12 months purification, that she only had 10 months. So what happens? It, when you really walk with the seven spirits of God, their mentorship, their tutorship, their... their um, how they govern and rule with you brings you into a place of acceleration. It sets you apart that you don't have to, how would I put it? You don't have to walk around the mountain. You literally come from here, from the valley, on top of the hill. Immediately, it puts you in an absolute place of acceleration. So this is what the seven spirit of God does. Let's go to another scripture. Revelation. Four, verse 5. Out from the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And in front of the throne, seven, seven blazing torches burned, which are the seven spirits of God. Seven blazing torches. So what do they do? Part of their ability to teach us into maturity is, remember what the Lord said about us, we are burning ones. So you are a blazing torch. So the seven spirits of Yahweh teaches us how to step in an eternal way and a permanent way as burning ones in unity with God. 
So what happens if you are burning one, you are blazing torch, it means you are releasing heat, you are releasing presence, you are releasing sound frequency vibration, you are a person of influence, things are happening. And we know that a burning one, the fire of Yahweh is his love. So you are a burning torch of love, which means you are positioned in a place that overcomes everything. Love overcomes. You see, and when they teach us in the different dimensions, which we will discuss how each one functions, you, be, you, you step into maturity in each dimension. So what are you doing? You are revealing Yahweh in those dimensions in a 360 degree circle in perfection. Because you function then out of your perfect love. So you are burning one. They are burning once before the throne. Now you must remember. They are gazing upon the face of Yahweh all the time. So they just have revelation, everything, just all the time. They know how he functions, what he desires. They've got the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the fear. They function, although each of them are separate, they all have the ability. They see the ability to function in all seven. Although they are a master in one, they can function in all dimensions. The reality is, it's the same with us. We don't just master one of those abilities. We've got the ability to function in the fullness out of all of them. Let's go to Revelation 5 verse 6. And there between the throne and the four living creatures, beings, and among the elders of the heavenly Sanhedrin, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been sl slain with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, the sevenfold Holy Spirit, who have been sent on duty far and wide into all the earth. So what happens here? The seven eyes of the Lamb are the seven spirits of God. Those are seven dimensions of beings. So an uh, eye is an entity. It's basically a being that can function on its own. It is alive. It's got a purpose. It's got a duty. It's got a function. So these seven spirits, as they come out of Yahweh with the, with the, um, the Holy Spirit, with the umbilical cords, they've got functions and duties. And they said they're moving far and out into all the earth. So these are gifts that God has sent us. When he sent us his Holy Spirit, when Jesus said, I have to go now in John um, 14 and 16, so that you could receive the Holy Spirit. He, he actually did not say then, out of the Holy Spirit are so many new dimensions, like the seven spirits of Yahweh that's going to walk with you to teach and equip you. So you don't have to worry about being immature. And remember what I said in previous teaching, your spirit man is actually not immature because it's been with the Father before the foundations of the earth. Though your spirit man is thousand, um, thousands of years old. And there's no way it's immature. So the seven spirits of God equips your spirit man into a place or gives him wisdom that he can speak into your soul and into your body as well to bring that up into alignment and in maturity. Let's go to Zechariah 4 verse 10. Here it says, who with reason despises the day of small things. For these seven shall rejoice when they see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. The seven eyes are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Seven eyes of revelation of the Lord, the sevenfold Holy Spirit running to and fro all over the earth. 
Now, let's get a little bit supernatural. Or should I say a little bit natural? If you have received the Holy Spirit and the seven false spirits are inside of you and they are running to and fro upon the earth, what are you doing? What is your ability? Remember, you are actually in union with the seven spirits as well, because they are part and parcel of the Holy Spirit. So the seven spirits of God is actually a permanent function, being, position that walks all over with you. So it's not just wisdom is walking with me or fear of the Lord or counsel or mind. The ability is if a mature son of Yahweh sees all seven all the time. So when we're not in a place of maturity yet, or we're not focused or intentional, we might see one or two of them at a time around us, because that is what we'll need at the time and moment. But the reality is because they're part and parcel of the Holy Spirit, they can't be separated. So it shows you how big is your spirit. Remember what I said. This, this must stretch you. Because your spirit, man, the earth is my footstool. So seven spirits, so you are covering creation. You're covering the earth by your spirit. So when you are covering the earth with the Holy Spirit, seven spirits inside of you, you are also covering and walking to and fro with eyes all over the earth. Do you understand that? Do you get that? I want you to think carefully. This is who you are. That's your ability. You see, we need to stretch our way of thinking. We need to start thinking Jesus. We need to start thinking heaven. So your ability is to go to and fro upon the earth. You see, and those, those are things that happen when you start are meditating on these things. They take you into all these dimensions. And these things become a reality with you. That's why meditation is so important. That's why I encourage you, please get onto the meditation, life meditations with Mark Marie and them. It's amazing the, the transformation that's going to come. Okay. So what do they do? The seven spirits of God have got a purpose. They are sent out by the Holy Spirit to empower us to encounter God. Now, I will make this clear. To encounter God is not what most people do. They pursue encounters. To encounter God is to come in union and unity with the manifestations of him so that he could be glorified, is to, to be there, to gaze upon him, to see the revelation of him, and then to touch, to taste, to smell, to feel, to hear him. You see, that's how you encounter God. What we're doing when we fly in the spirit and fly between the stars and to other galaxies, that is fine. Those are encounters. But they teach you how to encounter God, how to stay on the throne in maturity. Because when you stay on, on the throne in maturity, what are you actually doing? You, have, you are seated also in the keys of David then. Doors will be open that never get shut. You are seated then in your Melchizedek orders, which are the keys to unlock all your storehouses. So there are no end of your, your, your um, counsel, of your kingship. There are no end of the provision from heaven because everything is unlocked. So the, they give you the ability, they teach you how to encounter God. It means how to become one with him, how to behold him and how to reveal him. Because that needs maturity, and it brings us to a place where we are intentional. 
And what do they also do? The seven spirits of God is like the same that we read in Galatians 4 when they when teach us. They teach us as sons to inherit the kingdom of God. Remember what they told there that he spoke about in Galatians 4 verse 1 to 5 to about inheritance when you're young, you knew they bring you to maturity until you're heir. You're heir, but you're still a child. But then you become a master. And then these guys that govern and rule you will allow you to inherit the kingdom. So what do they do? They teach us as sons to inherit the kingdom of God. Because we need to step up into a level of maturity. God is not just going to release everything and say, there you go. He's not just going to do it. He needs to trust you. He needs to know that you will reign and rule to glorify him through that. Now, there's a very important thing, and I love it in with John and Revelation 1. 1 verse 4, John speaks and he says, John, to the seven assemblies, the churches that are in Asia, my grace, God, and merited favor be granted to you and spiritual peace, the peace of Christ's kingdom, from him who is, who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne. Aha, uh -huh. I love that. He gives us greetings from the seven spirits of God. John was in an earthly dimension, moved in the spirit, saw, heard, spiritual eyes were open, he saw, and he said, I give all of you greetings from my seven spirits. So it means that he was familiar with them, with them and he had relationship. I can't give you greetings from nobody unless I know that person and I've spoken to that person. If I don't know anybody, I'm not going to say, hey, I give you greetings from the president here. I don't know him. I know of him. But you see, here John comes and he releases an amazing key. He said, you have got the ability, you and I have got the ability to encounter the Holy Spirit, to befriend them, to be familiar with them, and to have relationship with them. Now, everything that God has released out of him, like the seven spirits of God, you and I should have relationship with. Especially if they are your tutors, your governors, your rulers, your administrators, if they are teaching you. So much more we need to get to know them, to understand them. So much more because they in the permanent presence of Yahweh. Now you see the same dimension that I spoke to you in previous teachings where um, God, Jesus, Yeshua can manifest at so many places at one time. Because the seven spirits are basically born, if I can put it a um, formed out of the Holy Spirit, they've got that same ability. So what's the reality now? Do you realize if you look around you right now where you are seated right now, the seven spirits are right next to you, are there. You might not see them. You might not have acknowledged them. The reality is when I said we're talking about the seven spirits tonight, you should have welcomed them there in your house. And where you are, because they are there. They walk with you all day. And they can't wait on you and I to allow them to teach us. Because they are just as desperate as the earth is crying out. They are crying out for the sons of God to allow them to teach them. So that the earth turns into glory. Okay. So the seven spirits, if I can put it in worldly terms or sport terms, they are top trainers. They are the ones that everybody wants. You'll pay the highest price because you want the best trainer. They are the best trainers because they're in front of the throne all the time. Okay, let's first go. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to get a give a short summary 
of each of the seven spirits. Let me just go through it. And then we're going to start engaging the greater ones. Or not the greater ones. Each of every one of them are great. But more in detail to work with it. The first one that we're going to look at is the spirit of the Lord. Okay. The spirit of the Lord, if I can put it for you in a picture form. Um, it says... The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Okay. The spirit of the Lord is basically, if I can put it like the covering, like the mantle. And even in a menorah, it is the leg in the middle coming out the highest leg. That is the center point. That is the power and the authority. And the spirit of the Lord has got a color as well. All seven spirits have got colors representing the seven colors of the rainbow, which is they are dimensions of the covenant of Yahweh. So what do they actually come and do as well? Part of the teaching, equipping and transforming us is to help us to manifest the covenant, bring us in maturity. So where you walk, the covenant of God is not just a something that you declare in the creed, but the covenant of God becomes a manifestation. So every spirit has got a color, and every color has got a sound, a frequency, and a vibration. It's a symphony orchestra to God. It's got a power, authority, and dominion. So what does the spirit of the Lord do? It's basically like a mantle, which cover all the other six spirits. And this is the spirit of the Lord appointed to us. Once um, we'll speak about the angelic and which angelic, there's a time coming, which Mark Marie and I will let you lay later on. That will be to do with the archangels and everything we teach on, but that's still in the future. Mm -hmm. So what does the seven spirits of the Lord do? They position us for dominion. The spirit of the Lord positions you for dominion. Why? It puts you in the center point, the pillar of the menorah, so that you can rule over all of the expansion, over all of creation. So you are forming. What actually happens is you, like Yahweh, you arc over creation with all the other dimensions of the other spirits around you. It teaches us to experience and see clearer. So the spirit of the Lord teaches you to experience and see clearer. How do I experience and see clearer? According to my position. And firstly, it's a positioning of your heart. It's the purity of your heart. So what does this, this spirit come and he do? When he reveals to you, he teaches you what your dominion exists on and what over you have dominion. You come into a place of awe and amazement that you release everything else that stands between you and the fullness of it. So what happens? You are removing all your earthly desires and things, and you start to experience and see much clearer. So it is also, the spirit of the Lord is also the one that sits in a seat of power and authority. It's where it says um, that the Lord, the power of the Lord, the, um, the spirit of the Lord is upon you with power and authority and everything. This is what the spirit of the Lord does. It gives you power and authority it's like you are sealed because you're in the center on the highest position you are sealed with that power and, and authority it teaches you into to become a mature son but with the sonship it also teaches us to step into mature rulership it means to take dominion take ownership you are an heir but you are also a master now i'm the master when i take up my position what i have inherited what have i inherited all of creation been given to me 
The next thing that the Spirit of the Lord does, it teaches us how to reveal, how to do become, and how to see the glory of God. Love it. How to reveal, how to be, and how to see the glory of God. And the color of the Spirit of the Lord is red. So why? Everything about dominion, about rulership, about sonship, kingship, everything, glory, is in a color red because it is love. So you are seated. It teaches us to be seated in perfect love all the time. The next one we're doing is the spirit of wisdom. Oh, man, I love it. And we're still going to do it on its own. I spend basically three days just on wisdom for myself. Just meditating, learning more and more. Wisdom walking into my room more and more. Walking in the streets with me, driving, getting into my car. I just call her the elegant, gracious lady. She's amazing. But anyway, let's go to her. What does wisdom do? Wisdom teaches us how to step into prosperity. And prosperity is not just finances. Let me make it clear. Prosperity is the fullness of the provision of every aspect of your being. That is to see, to hear, to rule, power, dominion, to whatever you do. Prosperity Wisdom takes you into the place where you've got the ability to release prosperity in all dimensions of your life. So prosperity is breakthrough. Don't ask God to come and give you breakthrough. You are in great breakthrough and wisdom is a key to step into that breakthrough. That prosperity. It teaches us about judgment, how to judge. To judge not by um, releasing death, but to judge in righteousness and to give life. Judgment to give life. And it's also justice. It makes us aware to see everybody's opinions, everybody's positions, and then make a decision that are in the will and the purpose and the desires of the heart of the Father. Wisdom is also wise. It brings Unity. So it positions us for unity. Wisdom was there in Proverbs 8.31. It says, wisdom was there before the foundations of the earth, and she was a delight to God. So what does wisdom do? Wisdom, and we've been teaching on joy Sunday night, and I'm carrying on this Sunday further on joy. But wisdom is a key to bring you into permanent joy so that you are on delight. Delight and joy, you can't separate. So that is what she does. She equips us for our position. She makes us wise to take up our position of rulership as kings and priests, as sons. And whatever position we need to take on at a time and a moment and a season, Wisdom comes and brings us to maturity now. And so what does she do? She equips us and she empowers us for our position. They, and and this is just by the way, the seven spirits of God, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, are referred to women in the Bible. Counsel, might, and um, fear of the Lord. Amen. And then you've got the spirit of the Lord with no gender. So those are just for interesting sakes for you. Then let's go to understanding. A oh, wisdom's color is orange. I know we've got a paintings in our church about the seven spirits and the lady has made wisdom yellow. But wisdom is orange. I've never um, seen wisdom in yellow. I've always seen and I know lots of mystical people and friends of mine, everybody sees her in orange. But now I want to make this clear. If the, let's not be religious. 
If the Lord reveals wisdom to you and another color, so be it. Don't think that because I've seen wisdom in orange and you might have seen it in yellow, that this one is wrong. That is really petty. You get actually get Christians fighting about it who's right about the color. You know, it's like I've had encounters where I saw King David and walked with him all over in heaven and dimensions where he's got dark hair and the next moment he's got light brown hair, then he's got blue eyes and he's got green eyes. And you get somebody tell me you've never seen him because David's only got red hair. So if he hasn't got red hair, the guy told me you've never seen him. But do you realize you yourself are changing dimensions all the time in the spirit? When I'm teaching you, I at least go to 11, 12 dimensions, transformations, changes in the spirit as I enter different realms to engage God, what to teach, what to say. As I engage the spirit of the Lord, I was in a realm. Now I went to wisdom. I'm in another realm. Now I'm going to go to understanding and another realm. Okay, understanding. Let's go. The color is green. What does understanding do? It, tell, it teaches us where to and how to access God and heaven. Wisdom and understanding works so much hand in hand because they give you knowledge and everything. So remember what I've taught before. Wisdom sees a picture from beginning to end, one panoramic view. Understanding comes and it breaks that picture into many frames. It takes it into seasons and little blocks. So for that day, for that time, for that week, for that month, for that year, that you work out of an understanding, you know exactly how everything is functioning right now. Why? Because how to access God and heaven. You need to have the understanding how God functions and how heaven functions because that is part of your dominion, your rulership, you need to bring God's desires down. You are supposed to bring heaven to earth. Okay. It instructs to receive and rule. How to receive from heaven and how to rule with what we have received from heaven. It authorizes us for our positions. So when we've got understanding, it instructs us how to receive and rule, and it gives us the authority. It authorizes us for our position. Why? Because we've got the understanding. Now we go to counsel, which is yellow. Counsel will come to you, and, and that will teach you which way to rule, where to go, which direction to go, how to rule, and which direction. How to access will also teach us how to access the counsel of God. Is God your counselor? I remember many times um, I've been in rooms and things and I've been taken up to heaven. Um, I don't want to expose people, big names out there. My one spiritual dad as well that has moved on. And then my clown will sit in his house and the next moment you are taken into heaven in the room of counsel um, and the Lord will be there and he'll counsel you, give you instructions. Next moment you back down in your house in the room and then a day or two later, you'll phone each other to ask you, did you do what the Lord told you to do? And you know about it. That's how I met Reinhard Bonker years ago before he died. I've never met him in the natural. Let's share a quick testimony. I know time is running out. Many years ago, I was sitting in my office preparing for an evening teaching. And the Lord said to me, and the Lord took us into heaven. And in the council room was Reinhard Bonke, Bob Jones, a few of us, many of us sitting there, about 12 of us, gave us instruction, everything. So then it happened three days later. The Lord, two days later, the Lord said, have you found Reinhard Bonker and ask him if he has done what I told him to do? I said, Lord, I don't know Reinhard Bonker. How do I get him? And the Lord gave me a phone number right there. I sat in my office, wrote it down. I phoned this number, 
Reinhard Bonka answered. And I said, Reinhard, Etienne, yeah, I just want to know the Lord said I must ask you, have you done what he told you to do? And he just said, yes, I have done that. And that's the first and only time I ever spoke to him. Never got that number again. But that's how what happens in a room of counsel. How to commune with God. It counsels you how to be one with God, commune with God. And how it prepares you for your position. It's all preparation, giving you counsel of how you need to address things, how you need to react on things. How, what is the protocol of heaven? It counsels you and all those things. I'm just going short summaries now, and then we're going to take on um, of, of the rest. The color of council is yellow. We'll get to when we go deeper into each spirit, um, we'll get all to the colors, everything much deeper. Five, the spirit of might, which is blue. It's all about strength. It's all about dominion. It teaches us how to reveal the power and the glory of God. How to reveal the power and the glory of Yahweh. Okay. Uh, teach us to war. So we'll get to that because now suddenly you're going to have people that just want to go in warfare, which we've got no ideas that are just, just pursuing demons and devils all the time. They've got no idea what is war. Teach us rulership. Might is because as in rulership, you need to step into might. You need to rule with might. And it reveals us for our position. It reveals you for your position. So it equips you. It reveals you. So immediately you stand and might and power. What? It reveals you to creation because you're in the maturity of the power and the glory of Yahweh. The sixth one is the spirit of knowledge, which is indigo. Spirit of knowledge, which is indigo. What does knowledge do? It teaches us how to access the knowledge of God. Remember, all these things are so important. Not just knowledge, the knowledge of God. Why? He is the creator. And you want to have the ability to, to access the source, the creator himself. You want it straight from his mouth, not via 10,000 other people, straight from him, because that's truth. It, it teaches you how to apply the knowledge of God. It's not only how to access the knowledge, but how do I apply the knowledge? What do I do with that knowledge that I've just received? Because everything that gets shows on to us, it's with a purpose. It's not just shown to you for fun. It is to function with it, to work with it, to bring, to let it multiply, bear fruit, to fill the earth. So it teaches us to apply that knowledge. It teaches us what to do with what you know of heaven. Love it. What do you do with what you know of heaven? What do you do with what you know of heaven? You see, you what you see of heaven, what have you done with it? So now knowledge comes and teaches you how do you administrate and steward heaven beyond the earth and all of creation. It also teaches how to function and operate supernaturally. I love it. Why? You're a spiritual being. You see, we've made the spirit realm supernatural, which is actually your natural realm. This is where we sit here in the physical. That is actually supernatural. How to function and how to operate supernatural. So it means how to function and operate out of a spiritual dimension. You know, that's where your power is. If it's not done in the spirit, there is no eternal value to it. And everything on the earth then is temporary. Let's go to the next one. I've given you the colors here of knowledge, indigo. Then the spirit of fear of God. That is violet. Spirit of 
spirit of the fear of God's violence. What does it teach you? Not to fear. Because the fear of God is the fear of his goodness. So what does it teach you? It teaches you how to stand in awe and amazement of God. What happens? How to be in awe and amazement of God. How to stand in awe and amazement of God. And you know what? You can never separate that from humility. Never. On amazement of God, it brings you into humility. That is why Moses, what the Lord declared upon Moses, my son Moses, humble like no others on earth. Why? He had a face-to-face -face relationship. He saw God. He was glorified. Everything was an awe and amazement. It also teaches us how to come in touch with God. How to come in touch with more divine. Teaches us that humility, that awe and amazement. Because when you see the goodness, the greatness, the glory of Yahweh, it immediately brings you to a place of, I will go so far, of quietness, of rest. Where you actually stand there, you're in such awe and amazement, you don't want to say a word. I, I know my own encounters and experiences that... I was taken into the Holy of Holies that it feels that you're going to explode because of his love. You don't even want to wink your eyes. You don't want to move your finger, anything. You feel like you're going to die because of the love, the goodness, and the glory of Yahweh that, that just consumes you. You see, and that's what the spirit of fear does. It takes you in that place. And what happens now? Immediately you step into gratitude and thanksgiving and praise and worship and awe and amazement. It's just a natural energy system explosion happening inside of you. It also shows us and teaches us of the realms of holiness, of intimacy, and of worship. You see, once you're in awe of God and you are touching him, how to become in touch with him, one with him, you immediately step into holiness because you're in the holy of holies. You become totally holy. You are totally intimate. And everything about you, body, soul, and spirit, comes into worship. And worship is flat on your face in the spirit, kissing his feet. You can't help it. It is a natural move. What does it also do? The spirit of fear of the Lord is bringing divine order. Because of you stepping into that oneness with God, glory, let's call it an Enoch, a Enoch baptism, if I can call it that way. It's just a name that I'm giving to it now. But it's exactly what happened to Enoch. What happens? Everything around you comes into divine order. It, nothing cannot be affected. And that is why the seven spirits of God are so important. When we walk, everything must come in divine order because of what we walk with and what we manifest. It also teaches us accountability for our position. People, I think in a lot of ways, the sons of God um, wants to have anything, everything, and they want to do everything, but there's no accountability. You know, that is like the Lone Rangers. They want to do everything on their own. They don't need other people. They don't need teachers. Um, they don't need spiritual mentors or fathers. They don't need churches, nothing. They just want to do everything. And what happens now? They are not accountable. You're going to get hurt. And the most thing, most important thing that you must realize, your accountability is to Yahweh. What are you doing with your rulership and your dominion by reigning and ruling? What are you doing with creation? You're accountable to him. Um, and what does the spirit of fear of God do? It also seals us 
for our position. So what happens is basically that you are stamped, you are authorized for your position. You are sealed because you're in that oneness with Yahweh. So what does it actually do? It seals you so you actually become untouchable. That's amazing spirit too. So the seven spirits teach us to take positions as sons, as kings, and priests in maturity, basically stepping into what we've done before, the order of Melchizedek. And it also teaches us how to reveal heaven on earth in spirit and truth as it is in heaven. So I think let's just stop there and we're going to open it up for questions. I don't want to, I don't want just ask questions of what we have spoken about now. That's it. Ask a question. Um, and we're going to, the next Wednesday we'll go deeper. We're going to go with wisdom first. And we're going to go deep in everything. So don't try and go too deep now. Just on, is there anything what I've spoken about early that you don't understand that you need um, some help with? So work through Mark Marie. She will rule and reign you. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let, oh, well, Alan is off mute. There we go. Alan, go ahead. Thanks, Etienne. That was awesome. Um, I just wanted to understand, when you spoke about the lamb with the seven eyes, um, are those eyes that you said are, are beings the same as the four creatures that have got the four faces that are completely covered with eyes as well? You are off mute, Etienne. You're on mute. Okay. That, those are different. The creatures and the seven false spirit and eyes are two different things. Those are different beings. You see, the no. seven spirit of beings as well. Just, just quickly, the seven spirits are beings as well. So you engage them. They manifest to you as beings. But we'll get to that. Yeah, sorry, my question actually is you spoke about the lamb with the seven eyes. And the so seven I, horns. Yes, the seven eyes of the lamb, are they the same eyes that are on the four beings that are covered in eyes? So I'm talking about the eyes specifically. No, no, not. That's a different dimension. Well, we'll, one day I'm going to do, I'm going to do the beings for sure. On one of the coming conferences, we'll do the beings as well. Thank you. Um, Robert, I see your hand. I just quickly want to ask, and I don't know if, if that's something you want to go deeper in. So we are talking about the spirit of wisdom. If, so if I need wisdom, if that is something like I'm in a situation and I need wisdom, do I engage with Holy Spirit and the spirit of wisdom? How, do, how does that engagement work? Good, good question. So what happens? Let's say I've got a meeting tomorrow and I know it's going to be a difficult meeting that I need to have a lot of wisdom. So what I said, I just come said wisdom. I ask that you walk with me that you prepare me, body, soul, and spirit, to hear and see clearly, and that you, the and angels of wisdom go ahead to prepare the person that I'm going to speak to tomorrow and the atmosphere. So wisdom walks with me intentionally. It's like, you know, it's like, how can I explain it? A lot of people sitting on the pavilion, then I call wisdom, wisdom stands up. It gets enlightened. So wisdom walks with you. The rest are still there. But wisdom is just more visible. Now, whatever I need with it, I ask it to function with me, to give me wisdom. So wisdom speaks to you while you're in the meeting. We can that, that the seven spirits of God is one of the greatest keys to take to your meetings. They do unbelievable work for you. Thank you. Uh, Robert, you can go ahead. Hi, good evening, Etienne. Hi, Robert. I just wanted to ask, um, in the beginning, um, I didn't quite understand what you're saying about the, the Holy Spirit and the umbilical cords and the seven spirits. Um, so I just want to understand um, 
what's uh, um, the seven spirits are, are are they different facets of the Holy Spirit or yeah. are they you, or you they got, different uh, beings you, under or or uh, yeah or, there's remember now let's say there's a circle inside of them are seven seven beings as well so now each those dimensions like on and build, they part of the Holy Spirit but they also function separately if I can put it to you that way. So they move in and out. They move in front of the throne. So they are part of the Holy Spirit, but they are dimensions of the Holy Spirit. Oh, okay. Um, so the Spirit of the Lord, is that now the Holy Spirit? Or? Remember what I said? What is the Spirit of the Lord? What did I say? Um, He's the covering. And he covers all of them. He's like the mantle, and out of them comes everything as well. He's the center point. He's the pillar. But it's not the Holy Spirit. So no. Um, no, it's the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, okay. The difference, and, the difference between Holy Spirit and Spirit of the Lord. Okay, so it's not the Lord's Spirit. No, yeah. the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry, I was, I was just a bit confused about all the. Uh, We'll, we'll go into we'll go deeper in all the spirits later then you'll get better understanding oh, okay no, I, I just thought you know as as each person has a spirit you know and god is a spirit being i thought the spirit of the lord is the lord's spirit you know no uh, no. no okay different dimension all right okay never mind then <laughs> um okay thank you etienne i'll give someone else a chance now thank you robert hi ross Nice to see you again. Hi, everyone. Hi, Etienne. Hi, Ross. Um, I just wanted to know if you could possibly just unpack a little bit more. Ross, uh, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. Can you sit a little bit closer? It's difficult to hear you. Oh, okay. Connected. Is that better? Hello? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay, sorry, so my, my Bluetooth speaker was connected. I um, just wanted to know if you could unpack a little bit more your your spirit man being perfectly mature, because it's been with the Father since before the foundations of the world. Um, could you please just uh, provide a little bit more insight as to once a person is saved, once a person is born from above, um, you know, how does that obviously impact your spirit man? Yeah. Obviously, your spirit man is activated and ignited and and made alive um yet is mature from before the foundations of the world yeah you get released into the world in maturity your spirit man now you've got a lifestyle because you get released into sin so until you you become born from above born again your spirit man gets defiled because it's not seated with Christ on the throne, because you've ne never accepted him as your Lord, your ruler, your savior. Now you accept him as Lord and ruler and savior. And he says, I give you a new spirit. So what okay. happens now? It's not actually a new spirit. What it comes, he takes your spirit and brings it back to it was before the foundations of the world. So it brings and it's you instantly mature. Instantly, okay. your spirit is always mature. Your immaturity is in your soul and in your body. Okay, that needs to grow, and that's why your inter intimacy with God is so important, Ross. That your soul and your body becomes jealous of your spirit, man, of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, thank you. Okay. Okay, there's a few questions in the chat. Um, Crystal, I think um, it didn't just answer. It is the Spirit of the Lord, the same mm -hmm. as the Holy Spirit. No, we will go into that deeper next time around. Then this question from um, John and Linda is really amazing. I, I <laughs> Makes sense. Um, with the colors of the natural things we see, the trees, the atmosphere correlate with the, sp with the colors of the spirits. For sure. Yeah. The manifestation of colors take place all the time because they're, those are functions in each and every color. Each and every color has got a function, a sound, a frequency, and a vibration. So God created creation with different colors because 
that, as I said before, is like a symphony orchestra, bringing unity, harmony, and everything. Every color, every every sound, every frequency has got a vibration. So it, be, it brings one solid piece of oneness with Yahweh. So we'll get into the colors more, but it's amazing. Everything. So even the angelic, the angels have got different colors because they function as well with the seven spirit. The menorah functions of the seven spirit. And, and, and it carries on the colors and the sounds. It, 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 it's unbelievable what happens. Hmm. Wow. That's a cool uh, tree, the green. Suddenly, uh, there's a whole lot of green out there. <laughs> wow. Uh -huh. Thank you for that question. That was really cool. Okay. And then Wanda is asking, please, can we clarify the description sentient beings? Hello? Um, sentient is it, beings is it are not sen sen sentient, sentient beings? Do I say that correct? They have, they have been called this too. Wanda, help me. We called what too? Wanda, are you there? Yes. Are they yes. shares? Um, they've been called sentient beings, as in um, just following on from what Ross had asked about how they function and they are separate. So these beings have been called sentient beings. So um, I just wanted to have clarification on what that means, whether it's just a, a, a person on its own, and I think it does, you know, it does actually relate to that but they have been called sentient beings in the past and i was just wondering whether you've heard of that term before you're on mute Etienne. you're on mute wonder where have you heard of sentient beings um in one of the previous um recordings that we've had with um with Cheryl on Hope Ministries, and she was she was talking to um about them as sentient beings. So that was her way of explaining to people that it was they were separate. They were um separate beings. They are a person on their own. So I just wanted to know whether that relates to what you were talking, the umbilical cords that can come in and out, that function oh, with the Holy Spirit. Sentient beings, first time I hear about that. Uh, okay. Okay. No. No, that, that's good. Alan, I Thank see you. your hand. I just want to quickly go to the question, um, the, the last question here. I prayed for my husband by laying hands on him and I saw blue and I saw blue all around him. Does that mean he walks in the spirit of might? Doesn't mean that he walks in it, but might is around him. So might manifests. Sometimes people will glow a certain color because of what's walking with him and what's available to him at that time. That that they'll come and manifest in a greater way when you pray because that is what's needed at the time and moment. So that's the let's call it the anointing for that time and moment. But yeah. If that color is manifesting, so it means he's functioning at that moment in time in might. It's needed for that time, and it's there for sure. It's a good thing. Beautiful. Okay. Alan, you can go ahead. So, Etienne, um, I understand what you're saying about the Holy Spirit and then the umbilical cords and the seven spirits of God. And when it talks about the creation, then the Lord created the earth. Um, he says the Holy Spirit hovered over nothingness. And the spirit of wisdom was there and was a delight. So yes. I'm accepting then that the other six spirits were also there. But it's interesting that they not mentioned, but the spirit of wisdom is mentioned. Do you have an yeah. understanding around or uh, yeah. why that was there? We, we must realize everything about Yahweh, everything about God, these dimensions, everything was visible, available at that moment. All was there. So he mentioned it because there's a reason why it's mentioned was there before the um, foundations of the earth, because of what they function, what was needed. It's just for us to understand the urgency, how to walk with wisdom. The reality is that when creation took place, as though, although we speak of Elohim that created and things, all 
of Elohim might have been the voice then, but all of Yahweh, all 72 his, 72 his names was there because he can't be separated into pieces. He is one. So that is just a unity. But as the moment, Yah Elohim spoke. So, but all of the rest are there because they are one. They're in unity. Although it's just one that spoke, that took the lead, if I can take it that way. But they all are there. And that is how oneness functions. There might be places where somebody takes a lead and be the voice, but all are present in unity. And our partnership, because we're in partnership, our power is just as much as the one that spoke. So wisdom was there. It's just mentioned because of the importance that we have being there in creation. Thank you. Great. Hiti seems to be offline. Hiti, do you want to ask something? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, then Crystal asks a question, and this for me is a very, very interesting question. Um, if it is off topic, you're welcome to dismiss it, but she heard somebody speak about the Holy Spirit as a she today. Do you have any thoughts on that? And is that connected to any of this? Do you want to answer that? Okay, let's talk. I actually spoke to somebody the other day as well on that. There is no gender in God, but I've had people that came to me and said, Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit manifested to them as a female, looked like a female. So most of the people, it's like a male, it doesn't matter. God will manifest them in a way that you need at that time, what you need to get. If God wants to manifest it, that it looks like a she to you, a, a female, that's fine. So there's no gender in the Godhead, no gender at all. So that is just a personal way of speaking or how you understand it. Remember, the reality is, if we just think about it, the father, Yahweh, is actually the female version of the Godhead and it's got the attributes of the female because that gave birth to creation but none of us uh, or I think so I'm thinking for myself for me it's difficult to see the father as a female we don't see him that way um so there's no gender in there but if he reveals himself in that way to you that that he could do If it's okay, I, I kind of want to tap in there. You know, we 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 have okay. God and they are they are the, they are three yet one. But for me, God is Father, but Holy Spirit to me is a she as well. So when she oh. said that, it was really it was like yeah, that resonates with me because when I experience Holy Spirit, I feel the Holy Spirit ministering to me in a feminine way, and I also connect with her in a feminine in a feminine way. While God the Father is a different is different yet one. But to me, that's a male, the male side of God. Um, so I kind of experience male and yeah. female all in God, depending on when and how I, how I pray. Amen. So, yeah. Very good. You see, because you see the Holy Spirit, why it will be female? It's your comfort, comforter, comforter, your helper. So those are just like a mother. It's just like a hen over chicks and things. So I can totally understand that for sure. Wow. What an incredible, incredible, incredible session. Um, I think we have a few minutes left. I want to kind of push it a little bit further, if that's okay, Etienne. But these seven spirits, we are learning, and if we're just reading a little bit about the energy is in our body. I've heard before that these seven spirits might be connected to the energy points in our bodies. Do you want to maybe just connect to that, say something about that? Yeah, I actually wanted to do it when we do the deeper thing. Okay, everything, everything, your energy system changes fully in your body. Everything, even when you touch where the energy points, your, your, your nerve systems, everything, everything you touch is a release of a different energy and what you are functioning because you are functioning out, out, out of a different realm. <clears throat> Remember now, I just want to make it clear. They are one of the Holy Spirit, actually, but they are also separate. 
So they function out of separate realms. So it's like seven cells sitting next to each other. So every time you engage a cell, a different one of them, you release a different sound, frequency, vibration, and energy. And your whole body then aligns to that because that is connected to the source, the Holy Spirit. Just in short. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. So are the New Age chakras counterfeit seven spirits or the energy points? Oh, yeah, they do. Oh, for sure. You see, we've given everything. <coughs> Sorry. We've given everything to the new age to a call. They had the revelation <coughs> to tap into it, to realize that all of creation's got energy, sound, frequency, vibration. It's got powers. They need to do something of it. And if you take up the occult, the new age, um, the satanic movement, they have taken all of it. And what do our Christians do? We've run away from it, not taking it back. We run away. Don't touch it. Don't go there. It belongs to the cult. No, it's in the new age. New, it's <coughs> no, it's in the satanic move. Don't touch it. People, we need to get it back. You take crystals, stones, sound frequency vibration. You got stones on your breastplate, and the new age are using the stones of the breastplate to do things to change atmospheres, to release energy systems, to create, to rule over atmospheres. And what do we do? We take our breastplates and we give it to them. Because we don't know who we are, what God. God created everything for you. You're the king, you're the ruler over every stone, every crystal, every precious stone, every metal. You've been created to rule over it. Power, dominion, authority. Take it back. Take it back. Amen. All right. Any other questions? Yep. Amen. Hi, Dewey. Please go ahead. We have Hi. about eight minutes left. Um. So... I guess the most effective way or one of the most practical way to function is by acknowledging the seven spirits, like what you said um, prior to go to the meeting room, I would just say, God, I acknowledge the seven spirit of God to, I acknowledge your presence and um, I ask you to reveal things that needs to be revealed and to be my guide as I go and proceed in this meeting, something like that. Basically acknowledging. Yeah, yeah. Um, you acknowledge, Lord, every morning when you get up, you acknowledge the seven, you, obviously, firstly, it's all about Yahweh, Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit, you praise and worship, everything. Then you have to acknowledge the seven spirits of God because they're part of the Holy Spirit, the dimensions of the Holy Spirit. And then you ask him to Thank you that you, or you tell them, thank you that you will walk with me today to teach and equip me to move from glory to glory, that I can move into maturity. Now I get into a meeting and I list and I sit in a meeting, I battle, for example, to have understanding of something. I said, uh, Spirit of understanding, please reveal to me what I, how it works and how I, so that I could understand, I get empowered. And now it empowers you, it talks to you. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. I think we're going to wrap this meeting. Oh, hold on. There's one more question by Alan. Uh, Christian, Chris, Christian? Yes. The the way I, I practically, practically do this is since I am in Christ and he is in me and I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, I see him, uh, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit as part of me. So when I walk, move about during my day, I don't go and acknowledge my foot when I walk. 
I just walk because I have a, a full expectation that my foot will do what it is supposed to do. And the same for my hand. So, so I understand the acknowledgement part of it, but there's a level where you, well, I just expect him to be there. I just expect wisdom and understanding and might to be there because it's not something that I need to engage. It is something that's already part of me, of my daily walk, of my daily life. It is not something I step into because I never step out of it. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. But there are times when the Lord instructs you to engage. The whole the, the reality is when we step into maturity, it's not necessary to engage one specifically because all functions function in unity. It is, I am. But there are times where the Lord, and I can vouch for it still now, still this still yesterday, I had a session that the Lord said, wisdom will come to you now. And give you the answer. So that is it. So don't put it in a box. Yes, we in maturity, everything functions at natural and intimacy with God, a mature son, all happens, all's in one. But there are times when the Holy Spirit tells you things. Yes, yes. Uh, it, and I've, I've experienced that as well, where you do have a specific yep. unction for a specific spirit to manifest. Yep. You're absolutely right. Yes, I agree. <laughs> You, you know, Christian, and, and to all of you, and Rian and I was talking about it today. I personally, in the natural, don't go and now I've got to engage wisdom, now I've got to engage this one, now I've got to go that one, because I am. You see, when you get into a place of oneness with Yahweh, really focused, everything manifests you. You can be whatever you want to be at every time and every moment. But in the beginning, for people to get to know these, these spirits and to, to, get, to get used to it and how to function it, it's a good thing to get to know them, both relationships like John, that you can also come to the place to say, hey, I send you greetings from wisdom tonight or whatever, to build that relationship. And then later on, they just there, that they part of you. Sorry, can I ask very quickly? Um, this is seven spirits. So basically, I only need to acknowledge that that is the seven spirits of God. And um, I just need to get deeper relationship. Uh, I mean, deeper revelation about it. But like, yep. um, I mean, yeah, it's just another dimension of the Lord. But I'm talking about like, um, well, this is probably completely different. Like, you know, in in um, in Texas area here, we we have tornado and everything. I don't need to ask the seven spirits of God first. I just, you know, use my authority like Joshua to tell yeah, them to stand still, and it it is completely different. It's like the authority that I have as the child of God, like. I command the tornado, you don't come here. Yeah. It's you see, but now that's why the spirit of mind equips you to how to walk. It teaches you what's authority, how to walk in it, and how to get there. Spirit of the Lord and the spirit of mind. So that, and then when you instruct a tornado or anything, you make sure you instruct what the Holy Spirit tells you to instruct, because that's a key. You can't just instruct things according to what you want. The word says, if you instruct or you say what the Holy Spirit tells you to pray, it's done. That's a, that's a key. Because why sometimes God allows things to manifest, to teach us something. So you can't just destroy everything unless the Holy Spirit told you. Hmm. Staying in intimacy. Yep. Amen. Amen. All right. Now we're going to say goodbye. Yeah. See, we're going to do meditation in about a half an hour. So if you yeah, join me there. Otherwise, we will see everybody else on Sunday evening for Sunday Live, where Etienne will continue the teaching on joy. Okay. Yeah. Etienne, do you want to wrap this with prayer?
Yeah. So, Father, we thank you that we are not the same as in the beginning. And this is going to be the beginning of a new relationship with the seven spirits of God that we're going to function in maturity and all of it. And you're going to be glorified in it. And thank you, Lord, that you'll give each and every person that listened tonight their own revelation. And you're going to empower them according to their purpose and their will and their identities. And it is done in the name of Yahweh. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Etienne. Okay, thank you, Ella. Bye. Bye.